Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Savelle. Thank you for watching the broadcast today. I appreciate you tuning in. And I believe, praise God, if you'll just stick with me for a few moments, you're going to receive some great insight into the Word of God that is going to make a winner out of you. I know because that's exactly what it did in my life. And God's no respecter of persons. If you'll do what I show you from the Word of God to do today, you're going to be the winner that God wants you to be. Now, today we're going to be talking about the Word of Faith. I love this subject. In fact, I am celebrating this year 50 years of preaching the Word of Faith around the world. This all began for me back in 1969. And let me give you just a little brief testimony before we get into the Word. In 1969, I owned an automotive paint and body shop. I repaired wrecked cars. I restored classic automobiles. My dad and I were building hot rods and race cars and hauling them all over the southern part of the United States. I was running from God at that time. I knew I had the call of God on my life. In fact, I heard God call me into the ministry in 1957 when I was about 11 years old. And I was in Oklahoma City at my grandmother's home at a family reunion. Someone turned on her old black and white field code television set, and the first image that appeared was Oral Roberts. And he was preaching under the big tent, and he was preaching one of his most famous tent sermons called The Fourth Man. Now, I was captivated as I stood there and watched him preach this message, and then suddenly I heard down on the inside of me, someday you'll preach like that. Someday you'll pray for people like that. And I, I really, uh, it caught me off guard. In fact, I thought at first it might have been one of my cousins talking to me because I had two cousins, one on the uh, left-hand side and one on the right. They were standing there with me watching the same broadcast. But when I turned to look at them to see and about to ask them, what did you say? Both of them were gone. And I thought, who said that? And then I realized it was the voice of God. Now, at that time, that is not what I wanted to do. I had no plans to preach. I had no plans to pray for the sick. That had not even been a consideration. My plans were I was going to open my own business. I was going to take all the expertise of my dad that he would pass on to me, and I was going to go in business for myself, and I was going to uh, eventually race automobiles, and that was my future. That was my plans. I had made those plans at nine years old, and I was not about to change. I was sticking with them. So I thought, I am not going to tell anybody about this experience, not my mother, not my dad. And if I don't tell anybody, I thought, then I won't have to do that. And so I never told a soul. And uh, every time I'd go to church as a young boy, we went to a little Baptist church down at the end of our street. And every time I'd get in church, if the preacher preached something a little bit strong and I'd get under conviction, I'd get up and walk out. I'd, I'd tell my mother, I got to go to the bathroom. I got to do this. I got to do that. Because I knew if I ever yielded to that conviction, then I would have to preach. And I didn't want to do that. And so I ran from it all those years. But in 1969, of course, by this time, I'm married. I have two children. Uh, I own my business. I'm doing exactly what I had dreamed of doing at nine years old. And uh, uh, I should have been the happiest man on the planet. I'm doing exactly what I dreamed I would do. And uh, as far as I was concerned, I was going to do it for the rest of my life. But my wife, uh, she was born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and went to church every time the doors were open. In fact, I think she had her own key to the place. She practically lived there. And uh, I came home from the shop one day, and she said, I want you to go to church with me tonight. I said, Caroline, I don't want to go to church. She said, if you will go tonight and listen to this preacher, uh, I'm telling you, Jerry, I've been in this all my life. I've never heard anybody preach like this before. She said, if you'll go tonight, and if you don't like this preacher, then I'll never ask you to go again. I thought, now that's the deal I've been waiting on. I'm going. And I said, now you promise if I don't like him, I'll never have to go again. She said, I promise. And so I went and cleaned up, put on some nicer clothes, and uh, we started over to the church. And on the way over there, I'm thinking, what is this preacher's name? And so she told me again, Kenneth Copeland. I said, Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Copeland. I know who that is. She said, how would you know who Kenneth Copeland is? You don't go to church. I said, well, back in 1957, there was a man who had a, a, a record on the radio, 
and his name was Kenneth Copeland, and the song was called The Pledge of Love. She said, it's not the same man. I said, well, how do you know? Has he ever said anything about it? She said, no. I said, well, I'm going for two reasons tonight. Number one, if I don't like him, I'll never have to go again. Number two, when he gets through preaching, I'm going to go up and ask him, are you the same man who had the hit record in 1957? She said, I don't think it's the same man. I said, well, I'm going and I'm going to find out. I'd like to be right one time. And so we went to the service that night. I sat right on the back row. I told her on the way over there, the moment I don't like him, I'm going to get up and leave and you can get home the best way you can. She said, if that's what it takes to get you there, then fine. And so we sat right on the back row, closest to the door as I could get. And then they finally turned the service over to Kenneth Copeland. And he began preaching. And about 15 minutes into his sermon, I mean, I wasn't really, you know, uh, captivated. Uh, I wasn't really paying that much attention. But when he got into about 15 minutes of his sermon, he just stopped. And he said, I don't know why I'm saying this. I guess somebody in here needs to hear it. Back in 1957, I had a hit record on the radio called The Pledge of Love. I was headed for rock and roll stardom, and my mother was praying that I wouldn't make it big in the music industry. She knew I had to call to God on my life, and I was to preach the gospel. He said, I don't know why I'm saying this. I guess somebody needed to hear it. Let's get back to the message. Well, when he said that, I didn't know at the time that he said that strictly for my benefit, but when he said that, I, I, I began to pay attention. And once I began to pay attention, Carolyn was right. I had never heard anything like this in my life. And the sermon that he preached was simply called The Word of Faith. Now, that's the first message that got my attention, and I've been sticking with that message now for 50 years. I have preached the Word of Faith all over the world. And you know, I've decided I am not changing. I don't care what everybody else preaches. I don't care what the latest fad is. I don't care what everybody gets excited about. The Word of Faith has worked for me for 50 years, and I'm sticking with it, praise God. And so that's the subject I want to talk to you about today, the Word of Faith. Now, I'm going to share with you five reasons why, after 50 years, I'm still preaching the Word of Faith. So if you've got a notebook handy, or you got your iPad or your iPhone, and you can take notes, then I want you to write down these biblical reasons why I'm still preaching the Word of Faith after 50 years. Now, let me begin with the scripture that Kenneth Copeland used that night 50 years ago. Mark the 11th chapter, verse 22 down through verse 24. If you have your Bibles with me, I invite you to turn there. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 says, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. Say that with me. Have faith in God. Now notice here, Jesus makes it very plain that you and I need to have faith in God. Not faith in religion, not faith in, in religious tradition, but faith in God. And to have faith in God also implies to have faith in His Word, because God and His Word are one and the same. God will never say something in His Word and then will the opposite. He, he and His Word are one. In fact, uh, John says that in his gospel. He talks about that in chapter 1, that the Word and God are one and the same. So notice it says, have faith in God, or you could say, have faith in the Word of God. Now, what is faith? What is faith? Faith is just simply a deep conviction of the reality that it is impossible for God to lie. Let me say that again. Faith is simply a deep conviction of the reality that it is impossible for God to lie. You know, I remember that night when Kenneth Copeland was preaching this message called the Word of Faith, he made this statement right at the close of his message. He said, when you get to the place where you believe God's Word as quickly as you would the Word of a doctor, a lawyer, or your very best friend, you'll never struggle with your faith again. I remember writing that down as soon as I got home, because I never had anybody to explain to me what faith was. You know, I heard sermons growing up, you know, you need to have faith, you ought to have faith, here's what faith can do, but nobody ever told me how to get it, nobody ever told me 
you know, uh, how that you could actually live by this thing called faith. And that night, Brother Copeland explained it. He's talked about how that the, 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 the faith of God, he says here, have faith in God. Another translation says, have the faith of God. And still another translation says, have the God kind of faith. And Brother Copeland explained that night that when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, that if you confess uh, or if you believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, then you will be saved. And he explained that night that once you do that, then God imparts into your life his faith, his kind of faith. Romans chapter 12 says that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So the moment you make Jesus the Lord of your life, God imparts into your life faith, a me the measure of faith. That is a measure taken from his faith. Now, uh, the Bible says that in Romans 10, 17, that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So that means if you keep feeding your spirit man on the word of God, that's where faith resides in your spirit. If you keep feeding your spirit man, the word of God, then your faith will grow. Your faith will increase. It will get stronger. And so Brother Copeland explained that that night. And when I got home, uh, I wrote those, those things down. Now, I didn't make Jesus the Lord of my life in that service, but when I got home that night, I could not go to sleep just thinking about the message that he preached. And I knew that, that I was getting under conviction, and I knew if I ever yielded to that, I would have to preach. But this was the first time in my life that I wanted to yield to it, that I wasn't fighting preaching. I said, uh, in fact, I, I laid in my bed until 3 o'clock in the morning. I got up and I went into the living room and I lifted both hands and I said, God, I don't know why you still want me. I've been running from you all my life. But if you do, if you still want me, then here I am. I surrender my life to you. I lifted my hands and immediately I received a glorious salvation. Not only that, but immediately I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance, as Acts, uh, Acts says, the book of Acts says. And, and I prayed in the Spirit for almost three hours. I couldn't stop. Man, I'm telling you, it was exciting. I, I, I felt that the sun was shining on nobody else but Jerry Savelle. It just felt so good. It felt great to finally quit running from God and surrender my life to Him. And immediately after I quit praying in the Spirit, I, I turned and looked and I saw my wife, my mother-in-law sitting on the sofa. And I turned to them and I said, guess what happened to me? Because they'd been praying for me for the last three years. Carol and I had been married three years uh, when this happened. And they'd been praying for me. I said, guess what happened to me? Uh, my wife said, we know. We've been here sitting here watching this experience that's taken place in your life ever since about 3.30 this morning. She said, I, I, I noticed you were not in bed. I heard this noise in the living room and I walked in there and saw what had happened to you. And she said, I called mama and said, mama, you got to come see what's happened to Jerry. So the mother-in-law came over and they both experienced this glorious thing that took place in my life. Now, immediately, immediately, it didn't take it didn't take another five minutes. It didn't take all day. Immediately, I developed a hunger for God. I developed a hunger for His Word. I wanted to know God. I wanted to know His Word more than anything else in my life. Now I'm beginning to make plans. When I went to my shop that day, I, I'm beginning to make plans on how can I shut this business down and how can I begin to prepare for full-time ministry. And so it didn't take long to do that in a matter of just a few months. Uh, I shut the business down and the Lord told me, and I'm not, I'm not suggesting anybody else do what I did, but I'm, I'm just telling you my experience. The Lord told me, I want you to give me the same dedication that you gave to that business. And I want you to do so for the next three months in studying my word, no less than eight hours a day. And so I went into my guest bedroom, six o'clock every morning, and I began to study the Word of God, and I didn't come out of there until 5 o'clock in the afternoon, had dinner with my family, fellowship with my family. As soon as they went to bed, I went back to that bedroom, began to study the Word. I did that faithfully for three months. 
At the end of three months, I came out of that bedroom with the fire of God in my eyes, the power of God in my hands, the Word of God in my heart, and only one problem. There wasn't a soul wanting to hear a word I had to say. Nobody was inviting me to come give my testimony. Nobody was asking me to come and preach. But I didn't wait until somebody asked me to come. I hit the streets of my city, Shreveport, Louisiana, 1969, and I began to preach in the streets. I began to preach to drug addicts, alcoholics, prostitutes, anybody that would listen to me. And I was having such phenomenal results in the streets that the police department asked me to start coming to the jails and preach. Then the sheriff's department asked me to come to the prisons and preach. And I was having great success. God was healing. God was delivery. God was setting people free. And finally, the word began to spread around my city. And uh, finally, some preachers decided, I believe that young boy has something to say. So they finally started inviting me to some of the churches and I began to do youth rallies and, and, uh, and speak into uh, uh, the body of Christ as the Spirit of God opened doors for me. And I'm preaching exactly what I learned from Kenneth Copeland about the Word of Faith. That's the message that changed my life. I figured if God's no respecter of persons, then the same message would change other people's lives as well. And so now, uh, Brother Copeland came back. He came back for another visit. And this is maybe six months after I got saved and uh, surrendered my life to the ministry. Brother Copeland came back and I could hardly wait because this is the man that preached the Word that changed my life. I could hardly wait to hear what he had to say. And so he came back and, and, and was going to do another week's meeting. And during that week, I had an opportunity to get acquainted with him. And one night in the service, he just stopped in the middle of his sermon, maybe 15 minutes into the sermon, and he pointed in my direction and said, Jerry, stand up. I stood up having no clue what he was going to do or say. And he said, I was in prayer today and God showed me that you and I will be a team and we're going to spend the rest of our lives together preaching the Word of God all over the world. It'll be your responsibility to believe God for the perfect timing for the team to begin. And then he said, sit down. And so he went back to his sermon. I leaned over to my wife and I said, what did all that mean? She said, I think we're moving to Fort Worth, Texas. I said, why? She said, you're going to spend the rest of your life preaching with Kenneth Copeland. I thought, wow, what an exciting thing. What, what a privilege that would be. And so shortly after that, maybe nine months after my conversion, we moved to Fort Worth and I went to work with Brother Copeland. Now, please understand that Brother Copeland had been in the ministry two years himself before I joined him. And so he was young in ministry, but he was certainly of a, a whole lot more advanced in the Word uh, and in the Word of faith than I was. And so traveling with him, that became like my Bible school. It became my seminary. I, I was with him everywhere he went. Kenneth Copeland went nowhere without Jerry Savelle back in those early days. And usually he preached three services a day. I'm in every service taking notes, studying the Word, and not only that, but applying it and, uh, uh, and I'd come home and share with my wife what Brother Copeland preached about. We would apply it. And we had as a great example, he and Gloria, and uh, we watched them uh, live by faith. We watched what it produced and praise God, we had their example to follow. In fact, the Bible says, follow those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So we followed their example. We kept studying the Word of faith. And praise God, it began to work in our lives just like it was working in their lives. And now it's 50 years since that took place in my life, and I'm still preaching that same message. Why do I preach the same message? Very simply, because it works. Hallelujah. Because it works. Everything I have in this ministry, everything I have personally, everything about this ministry, everything about our personal lives, it's all because of the Word of faith. Hallelujah. You know, it's a great way to live because when we first began to hear the Word of faith, we were in debt up to our eyeballs. Our marriage was just hanging together by a thread. Uh, we were sick all the time. Uh, we were broke half the time. And that all changed. Didn't over change overnight, but it all changed as we continued in the Word of faith. And today, praise God, 
This ministry owes nobody. It's debt free, been that way for years, praise God. Uh, everything we, we have in this ministry is paid for. Everything we do, we believe God and pay cash for it. Same way personally, praise the Lord. And, and somebody says, oh, that word of faith, it's over with. Oh, you've, you've come too late for Jerry Savelle. No, it's not over with in our household. In fact, we've decided we're going to live this way for the rest of our lives. And I plan to be here when Jesus comes. So right up until his appearing, Jerry Savelle will not only be living the Word of Faith, but Jerry Savelle will be preaching the Word of Faith. I am not changing. I like to say, my mama didn't raise a fool. This stuff still works, and I'm still going to preach it, and I'm still going to live it. Now, here's the reasons why I keep preaching the Word of Faith. I'm going to give them to you, and then on future broadcasts, we're going to expound upon them, because I don't have a whole lot of time left on the broadcast here. But I felt it was important that I give you that background. Now, five reasons why I still preach the Word of Faith. Number one, it's what the Apostle Paul preached. It's what the Apostle Paul preached, and he said that I am to be a follower of him. Now, I'll give you all the scripture references later. But number one, it's what the, the Apostle Paul preached. And I believe he's a great example, praise God. If Paul preached the word of faith, then Jerry Savelle is going to preach the word of faith. In fact, when I get to heaven and I have an opportunity to sit down with the Apostle Paul, the first thing I'm going to tell him is, I preached all your sermons. Hallelujah. I mean, the Apostle Paul was a man of faith. He preached the word of faith. And I have been following his example all these years, and I look forward to telling him, thank you, Paul, for not compromising. Thank you, Paul, Paul, for continuing to preach the Word of Faith. I've been following that example ever since I surrendered my life to the Lord. Now, the second reason why I preach the Word of Faith, it says in the Bible, the just shall live by faith. And notice that is not a suggestion, it is a command of Almighty God. The just shall live by faith. Who are the just? Well, if you're born again, you're one of the just. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. Now, once again, I'll give you all the scripture references on next week's broadcast, and we'll expound upon each one of these points. But right now, I just want you to write them down. And I want you to keep them handy and be sure to join me next week as we expound upon them. Now, number three reason why I still preach the Word of Faith after 50 years. Number three, it's impossible to please God without faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. Hebrews tells us that, and once again, we'll expound upon it on next week's broadcast. And then number four, it's our method of victory over the world. It's our method of victory over the world. Praise God. Without faith, you're not going to live a victorious Christian life. So write that down. It's our method of victory over the world. And then number five, everything God has for us must be received by faith. Do you want everything God has for you? I certainly do. Well, if you're going to receive it, then it's going to be by faith. So write those down, keep them handy, and then next week, I'm going to give you all the scripture references. I'm going to expound upon each one of them, and praise God, I believe it's a program that you do not want to miss. Now, uh, I want to take you into this announcement, and then in a few moments, I'll be right back with some closing remarks. Your faith is the title deed to God's promises. It doesn't matter what mountain you might be facing, by faith you can overcome. In his timely book, Life of Faith, Jerry Savelle shares insights from the Bible and over five decades of his own faith journey. In its pages, you'll learn how to release your faith and see beyond your present circumstances. Discover that your faith has the ability to grow, to sustain not just yourself, but you can be a blessing to others. It is impossible to please God without faith. In the powerful three CD teaching, Life of Faith, Jerry teaches spiritual truths every believer needs to learn. Living a life of faith will produce your greatest adventures. Nothing is impossible with God. Don't wait any longer. Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org and request the Life of Faith package, including the book and three CD teaching. Living by faith is a biblical command. 
you can live by faith, overcome the world by faith, and be the winner that God has called you to be today. You know, I love receiving reports from people that are watching our broadcast and learning how to live by faith. And I want to share some of the testimonies with you because I believe it's inspiring and possibly you may be going some of, through some of the same things that these people were going through and it will help you to stay in faith and trust God and refuse to give up. Here's one from uh, a lady named Cinda and she says, I was watching your broadcast on live stream and uh, from your church, Heritage of Faith. You prayed for people experiencing pain in their head and in their necks. And I was having such pain in my neck when you prayed and immediately the pain left. Brother Jerry, thank you for being obedient to the Lord. Here's another one from Mary Ann. She said, we recently uh, asked your prayer department to pray for our daughter, for her heart. We just received an excellent report. Not only that, but my husband and my grandson uh, received a positive report on their blood test as well. Here's one from Patsy. I was about to let go of my car because I could no longer make the payments. But praise God, someone was impressed of the Lord, a friend asked me to go to lunch. And while I was at lunch with her, she gave me a check for $1,500 that would cover three months payments and for the insurance. And I'm positive and I'm sticking with God's word that he will work out the rest in my behalf. Thank you, Brother Jerry, for helping me to stay focused on the word of God. I love those reports, praise God. And if God would do it for them, he will do the same for you. He's no respecter of persons. Thank you for joining me today. And once again, I want to encourage you, make sure you make your plans to join with me next week as we continue talking about the five reasons why I'm still preaching the Word of Faith. Let me remind you before we leave the air that our special resource package today, three CDs entitled The Life of Faith. Everything God has for you, and it's much. There are blessings in store for you that, that I'm telling you will make your life so much better. But if you're going to receive them, you're going to have to do it with faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. Three CDs on The Life of Faith. And right along with it, my book on the same title, The Life of Faith. This is a great book. It's, it's, it's uh, not really thick. You can probably read it in one setting. And it has uh, full, it's full of revelation about the life of faith. And I know the moment you receive it, you're not going to be able to put it down. So make your plans to order those resources today. All the ordering information is on your screen right now. Thanks once again for joining us. And I just want to remind you as we close, your faith will overcome the world.